one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to A New Direction. My name is Jay Izzo, and oh, we have done it again. Oh, my gosh, do we have a great show. It's an unbelievable show. It is a show that will help you grow. Oh, yeah, I did a little rhyming. Yeah, that's what I do with my off time is I do a little rhyme. Well, I'm telling you what, today's show is going to blow you away. It is going to change your life. It is going to be amazing. It is life changing. And I'll tell you why, because the author that we have here today, who has written this outstanding book entitled Mastering You from the Inside Out, Skip Cummins is with us. And oh, man, my golly molly, I am just telling you, this book is a life changer. It is a profession changer. It is a personal changer. It is a relationship changer. Folks, I call this book the three T. It's called the triple T. You know why I call it the triple T? Because here's what it is. It's tragedy, transformation, and triumph. That's the triple T threat. And that's what this book is. It is tragedy, it's tragedy, transformation, triumph. I'm just telling you, Skip Cummins is fantastic. You're going to love him. He is awesome. He is, you can see, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you can see him. He is just a uh, super, super awesome uh, brother, and 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 uh, we're becoming great friends. And so, folks, you're going to love him. But listen, before we get to that, let's do what we do every week, right? I walk you through your training in the four areas of your life because here's the, here's the truth folks when you're under pressure when you're under stress when you're under fire when you're exhausted and you're hungry and you feel like you can't go anymore we never rise to the occasion we only fall back to the level of our training and we are four-part people we are physical people mm -hmm. mental people emotional people and spiritual people all right and so what we're gonna do is i want to find out how you're doing in your training right now so physically when i talk about how is your training going what i'm asking you is how's your exercise regimen how's your how's your healthy eating coming along how about drinking enough water how about getting enough rest how about taking care of you physically and if you were to rate yourself on a scale of one to ten one being my training really is bad ten my training is awesome what would you give yourself as a score five is average all right, that's your first number. Second number is your mental training, right? I'm not talking about sitting down and let things come at you. I'm talking about actively growing in your knowledge and understanding of your job or your profession or your personal life or your relationships, mentally pushing your brain, right? And you have two sides of your brain. You have a right side, you have a left side. Are you put, what are you doing to be more creative? What are you doing to enhance the creative side of your brain? What are you doing to enhance the logical side, your left side of your brain, right? Right, so often here's the problem that happens with, with us because we're, we're generally right brain dominant. The right brain people don't wanna look at any numbers. Man, but it's really important that you do if you wanna be successful. They're called P&Ls. Profits and losses, they come in both personal and professional. You need to take a look at them. And yet, you you know what? You left brain dominant people, you don't want to hear all that creative, funky stuff, right? But you know what the truth is? You need to exercise that part of your brain. So how would you rate yourself on your training mentally? Scale one to 10, all right? You got two numbers. Third number is your emotional training. By the way, we've been in emotional training since this pandemic started. Right, we're all being tested. We're all being tested about you know, how well we could do two things. One is how well am I able to control my emotions under all this stress and pressure? And then the second piece of your emotional training is how well are you able to truly tap in and understand the emotions of other people? By the way, to do that, that's, you know, it's kind of funny. Be quick to listen, all right? Be quick to listen, be slow to talk, and then be slow to be angry. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great, you know, little tri triplicate there, right? Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. It works. I'm just telling you. And because when you're listening, you're tapping in. Now, you may need to expand your emotional vocabulary, and that's all fine and well. And you can do that. You can learn about what the different emotions and variations of emotions are. But how would you give your score? training yourself to be better emotionally, keeping it under control and understanding others' emotions. All right, fourth, fourth scale, spiritual. 
look, spiritual, spiritual things, we're all spiritual, whether you like to believe it or not, we all really are. We all have faith in something, even not to believe in something is faith. <laughs> it's true. If you, if you go, I don't believe in that. Well, you have faith that then you don't believe that it's faith, right? We all have faith. You, you have faith that, you know, maybe you have faith that God doesn't exist. Maybe you have faith that God does exist. Maybe you have faith in, you know, nature that, that brings all harmony, right? Maybe you have faith in whatever, right? We all have faith, but we have a spiritual side because here's the thing that I find about people who are really spiritual. What happens is they understand that there's something outside of themselves beyond the physical, the mental, and the emotional, where they can get a sense of peace, where they could get a sense of joy, even amongst chaos. Right, that's spiritual. How's it working out for you? Well, that and it could be God. It could be nature. It could be yoga. It could be meditation. It, it could be, it could be a number of things. Is it working for you? And if it is, what do you need to do to improve it? And if it's not, then maybe you need to find some way to change it. So, on a scale of one to ten, how would you say your training spiritually is going? That gives you four numbers. Right. They're like the legs of a chair. Legs of a chair. If your legs of a chair are uneven, right, and you sit in that chair long enough, guess what happens? You, you, your posture goes bad. Same token, if the chair's too, too low, low, what happens? Well, you can't sit at a normal table and you can't, you can't eat and eat nutritiously. Speaking of someone who's got all of his areas, um, I'm telling you, his, his chair is perfect, I think. And his name is Skip Cummins. He, is, uh, he was from a blue collar town. In Western Pennsylvania, Skip um, has lived a life full of opportunities, lifetime a full throttle, uh, following his maybe wrong but never in doubt philosophy, a life full of extraordinary successes, devastating tragedies, and spectacular mistakes and failures, all of which he owns, he has embraced, is grateful for, and from which he has learned many valuable lessons, both personally and professionally. Uh, he was raised by his figurative grandmother on $12.50 per month on child support. After his parents' third and final divorce, he was the first person from his small town to graduate from an Ivy League college where he excelled at both football and track uh, as a linebacker and javelin thrower. He went on to learn his M MBA. Um, he paid for his own education by working construction labor during the summers and uh, through school loans, all of which he repaid before their due dates. <laughs> something that rarely happens in today's world. Skip had an accomplished career building and managing with three partners, a $750 million venture capital company, during which time he helped numerous entrepreneurs and their employees realize their personal and professional financial dreams. He then became the CEO of, of an essentially bankrupt medical device company, pioneering new medical science and commercializing a revolutionary new device for the treatment of drug-resistant epilepsy and severe depression, which improved the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and created over $1 billion in shareholder value. Uh, he's faced unimaginable personal professional tragedies. His mother, um, which uh, kind of starts the whole story, a lifelong battle with addiction, um, ultimately committed suicide when he was 32, uh, when he was in his 30s, and then his um, adopted uh, daughter um, at the age of 32, she suddenly died out of nowhere. And uh, he wrote this book, uh, Mastering Your From the Inside Out, and uh, a proven formula and tools. By the way, this is the thing about this book. It's got so many tools uh, and exercises that I have gone through that have personally, for me, have been amazing and have changed me. He, he holds the distinction of receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Epilepsy Foundation while simultaneously being labeled as the most combative CEO in America by Wall Street uh, TV personality. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show and welcome to A New Direction, Skip Cummins. Welcome, Skip. Yep. Hey, Jay. Thank you very much. Geez, that was quite, the, quite a kind introduction. <laughs> well, you know what? You deserve it. Um, let, me, let me just say that the book, I, I can't say it enough, this book has been a game changer for me. Uh, it's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely brilliant. And so let's just dig right into it. Um, you start chapter one, my story. This is 1987. You're 33 years of age. Your mother commits suicide. And uh, and you know the description of it is so graphic. Um, I don't need to go into it, but it kind of triggers for you a series of events that um, that becomes that you become very passionate about because you mentioned some of the statistics here, and I want to throw these out because I think they're important for people to know. Thirty-five thousand Americans commit suicide per year. Four million Americans suffer from treatment-resistant depression. Ten times 
um, 10 times the number that suffer from drug resistant epilepsy and the antidepressant drug market is one of the largest, most profitable drug markets in the world. Um, this starts the journey for you, doesn't it? Yep. Well, of course, the origin challenge started long before that. But yeah, that was that was a seminal event in changing the direction of my life and fostering in, in me a commitment to improve people's lives, especially with intractable illnesses. And the reason why I say this kind of starts it all off is because this the kind of this whole passion with your mom, you know, eventually leads to uh, you being a CEO at Cyberonics and and the whole thing. But of course, that's going to all it all falls apart at one point. Um, continued tragedy for you. But then what happens is as you're as you're building yourself back up after all this, right? This is this is you 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 had the high, the pinnacle. You had the low. You went to the high pinnacle of being the CEO of Cyberonics, and then um, that falls apart. And then um, you're rebuilding your life. And this is where I want to start really and get people's attention is mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about how we rebuild ourselves after we fall from the highest cliff of our life. And, 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 you know, there could be other cliffs, right? But one of the things that was so powerful to me was in chapter two, because this is where it all starts. And chapter two is called the origin challenge. And it is an exercise that I don't know where you got it. I don't know how you put this together or if you just came up with this. But this challenge of determining your origin is so important. Why are, why is our pre-programming, or I think you say, from whence we came? Why yeah. is that so important? Well, when you think about it, the first 18 years of our lives, we are the most open, the most impressionable, and the most vulnerable. Plus, we have the, the ultimate respect at that point for authority or father and mother figures. So the programming that's done during those first, first 18 years by our parents, by our coaches, by our teachers, by our siblings, by our friends, by our life experiences, in essence represents our D, part of our DNA our emotional, intellectual, spiritual, et cetera, DNA. That unlike our biological DNA, we have the power to change. But in order to change that emotional, spiritual, et cetera, DNA, our origin programming, we have to understand and own it first, which for a lot of us is really hard to do. Yeah, and I wanna take people through a little bit of this, if you don't mind, because I think it's really important that people, because I did this, and I discovered some things, I consider myself to be pretty healthy. That doesn't mean I don't carry my big black garbage sack of crap. Exactly. Right? It, I mean, yep. yeah, right from my past. Yeah. So here's, here's how you started this. You could right, And people, listen, replay the show if you want to, but get the book because he's got every one of these exercises in it. Write down five to 10 words or phrases that immediately come to mind to best describe your mother during your childhood. Don't think about whether they are positive or negative. Just write down what immediately comes to mind. Then do the same for your father. Here was the big one for me. <laughs> Step three, now write down three to five things that you wish your mother had done more or less to be a better mother. Yeah. And then step four is do the same for your, for your father. Dude, this is powerful. Because I never, I never had just, you know, I think we kind of get into denial that our parents don't have much to do with what what's going on in my life now. Years oh, ago. That, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so then we get into this denial thing and then you start to realize I just had, I had this conversation with my wife. I said, I did this exercise. I want to tell you, this is what I learned right mm -hmm. from this exercise. And I was, I was really blown away because I didn't, I didn't really see, because what, what well tell tell people what gets revealed as you go through this exercise. Well, the thing is, the book and the program are basically like me holding up a mirror for you to look in, a mirror to look deep inside you to see who and what you are and why. So the origin challenge is critical because 
once we get to be 18 and 21, et cetera, we think, okay, we're free from our parents, just as you said, Jay, and they have nothing to do with our lives. No, they have everything to do with your lives because of that very powerful origin programming. So you look at the positive and negative traits of your father, of your mother. Then you look at their relationships to understand your relationships origin programming. And then you look at your similarities and differences to that origin programming. And all of a sudden, you'll come across these things where you've been wondering, why in God's name did I say that? Mm. Why did I do that? Mm. All of a sudden, it becomes apparent because I was programmed for the first 18 years of my life to define success this way. Well, that really doesn't work for me anymore. So the first, the first step in doing your adult reprogramming is to understand and own your origin programming, both in terms of traits, triggers, emotions, how you define success, what you consider to be a good relationship, et cetera, across the board. So once you understand and own that origin programming without being judgmental, because guess what? Yes, that programming was done by your parents and your coaches and your teachers, but they're not the ones that are responsible for changing it if you don't like it today. You are the one responsible for changing it. So how how do you know you need to change something unless you understand from whence it comes? Hmm. You know, I have to be honest with you. You know, you as I did this search in myself and I came up with a number of things that revealed to me why I have these certain habits that I don't, I don't like, but clearly I don't like, I, I don't, I hate, I don't hate them enough that I want to get rid of them. Yep. And, and part of it is this programming, you know, from being a kid. And then I, I came across the same discovery that you did. You know, you, You say in this chapter that you discovered in your challenge, your origin challenging, that it was a lot of pain, shame, guilt, abandonment, betrayal, self-betrayal, distrust, self-reliance, passion, courage, strength, determination, resolve. There was good and bad. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And what's interesting about the whole origin programming thing is what was good and worked for you in certain situations just like strengths often become your weaknesses in your current situation, those things may no longer work for you. Therefore they are bad Mm -hmm. and need to be reprogrammed. So, you know, life ebbs and flows, but always being conscious of that origin programming or training is very important. I, 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 it's critical because I, I have to tell you something, this seriously, when I say that I discovered things, I was like, Oh my gosh. I'm, 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 I was like, I can't believe, I can't believe that's exactly what happened. Right. And then here's the other piece. And, and, you know, you kind of allude to this too, right? So you start to see the things that happened to your origin piece. And then there was a point where I got a little mad. (laughs) I got, I got a little mad at my parents. Right. (laughs) Yep. And then, but then there came a point was, hold on right? Okay. Okay. Maybe they gave me this and maybe I'm mad at them for that. But the truth of the matter is I got to forgive them because they, I know that they weren't trying to do anything intentionally. They were just doing the best they could. Exactly. And the next point becomes is, okay. So like in my case, my reliance on me, myself and I, and my codependency and my, um, my desire to prove everybody that told me I couldn't do something or had anything bad to say about me, you know, the proverbial B word yeah. I was wrong. Um, uh, you know, that really is what took away my uh, career reputation, 50 million of my net worth, blah, blah, blah. But when you really ask yourself the question, did that programming take that away? Mm-hmm. Or did my failure to understand, own, and revise that programming take it away? Hmm. The answer is number two. Yes, I may have been programmed that way, but my parents are long gone. They're not responsible for my reprogramming. That responsibility is mine. Right. 
So if I'm going to, if I'm going to be irritated or disappointed or frustrated with somebody, once again, look in the mirror because there's the answer to the question. I love it. His name is Skip Cummins. The book is entitled Mastering You from the Inside Out. It's fantastic. We're just getting started really in, in the first, in the first minutes of the show. We're, but I'm going to tell you something. We've got a lot to do because I've got tons of notes. And so we may be here for the next three days. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but you know what? You're listening to him here on A New Direction. Hey, everybody. You know what? i got great sponsors on the show and i uh, got to talk about them, right? One of my, my sponsors is Epic Physical Therapy. By the way, can I tell you something about them? I, I talk about, you know, look, they can help you, you know, whether you've had a surgery, you're, you know, an injury, maybe you're suffering everyday pain. I talk about that. But can I tell you something else? They did something really ecstatic for me here recently. And I needed a referral for a doctor a surgeon um, for my wife. And they gave me this referral because you know why they're so connected to the best doctors. And can I tell you something? She had her surgery today and she was in tears because he was so awesome. You know, it now listen, Epic didn't make a dollar off that referral, but that just tells you the kind of people that they are, right? Because the truth of the matter is they want to help people get better, right? This is why we say, you know what, if you want epic relief, epic recovery, epic results, you start at epic physical therapy. It is absolutely true, and I could not be more grateful for what they did. So thank you, Epic. You gave my wife epic relief. You helped her get epic recovery, and you she's going to have epic results, and I cannot thank you enough. So start, ladies and gentlemen, start wherever you're at. Start with epic physical therapy. You can learn more by going to epicpt.com. That's E-P-I-C-P-T dot com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, you know, for 35 years, she's been at the top of the real estate game. How does she do it? Well, she understands something really, really fundamental about doing business. You know what that is? All business, regardless, is not B2B, it's not B2C, it's P2P, people to people. It's personal, right? And it's about relationships. And it's about understanding, you know, people personally, you know, why, why is their house so important to them? Because it's got memories and every memory is important. They may have had their kids in that house. It may have been the first house that they bought together as a couple. Maybe it's, it's the, it's the place that they raised their children, right? Every house has memories, right? And she understood that. And she understood that the relationship between the house and a person and her was just fundamentally important. And so for 35 years, she's been developing relationships in real estate and helping people get the best price for their home when they sell and helping buyers, you know, find the right home for themselves. So when you're ready to do anything in real estate, regardless of where you're at, start with Linda Craft and Team Realtors, right? Because she's passed that down to her team. And you can learn more by going to lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And we're back here on A New Direction with... Uh, Skip Cummins and his book, you know what, Mastering You from the Inside Out. It's a fabulous read. Um, I've loved it. Skip, I'm going to skip, I'm going to skip ahead. <laughs> That's awful. Um, okay, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to skip ahead a little bit here. Um, you talk about in chapter five, and I just want to go through this a little bit briefly, live your life plan. And the first thing you start out with is we have all heard plan your work and work your plan then you challenge us with this. How about plan your life and live your plan? Talk to us about that a little bit. Okay, before I do that, Jay, let me jump back to origin challenge for a minute if I can. An, sure, unab absolutely. an unabashed plug. So given that the key to mastering you from the inside out starts with you mastering your origin challenge, because that is from whence you came, right. and that is the you that you're trying to master, um, one of the things I just released on Udemy or or Udemy, however you say it, <laughs> not yeah. really. I, I haven't been educated on the proper pronunciation. Is I just released my first online video course entitled "How to Master Your Origin Challenge," and it has lots of exercises, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It includes the a free version of the the book chapter. But someone who took that course early on as like a beta test said to me. Skip, you realize this is like two years worth of therapy. And right. I said, yeah, it is. 
with the person who's doing the course as both the therapist and the client, which is what mastering you is all about. Right. You mastering you from the inside out. Love it. Love it. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's Udemy. By the way, if you've not been to Udemy, it's U-D-E-M-Y. Um, check out. You can you can check out. You can put it in Skip's name and and you can find him. But yeah, Udemy is a great place uh, to get yourself an education. And it, it's it's not it's not really all that. It's not going to cost you like going to college. Um, so oh, no. uh, so not even close. So or, or it won't it won't cost you uh, the tuition you pay when you make a giant mistake that costs you right. an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, it's right. a lot less expensive than that one. Okay, so life plans. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah, and, and again, the whole purpose of the book is I, I hold up a mirror in, pr- in front of people's faces, but then to help them understand what they should be looking at, I throw in all my experience. So as you said, yeah, I was doing really well in life. I had a family, a great career. I was regards as a pioneer in neuromodulation, you know, was making you know, embarrassing amounts of money, had equity in Cybronics that at one point was worth $100 million. Um, But the problem is, even though I was a master of business planning, I didn't have a life plan. Hmm. So if you don't have a life plan to which you're holding yourself accountable, it's just a pipe dream. But consequently, I didn't have a plan for investment. I didn't have a plan for consumption. Like when when is the right time to buy a new house or buy a new car, okay? Um, We didn't really have a relationship plan. And as a result, my my marriage to the mother of my children ended in divorce. We we didn't have a relationship plan. We didn't have a plan on how, how despite all the distractions in life that come with kids and careers that are taking off, et cetera, we didn't have a plan on how to keep our relationship fresh, which on an interesting side note is now that I wrote the book and my the mother of my children who, to whom I was married for 21 years and have now been divorced from for three years, she read the book two or three times. So now that we know now what we wish we'd known then, we're getting back together. Okay. So there you go. The, the book awesome. works wonders. That's awesome. <laughs> but anyway, so people ignore these plans. And as a result, opportunities of a lifetime come and go. Yeah. And, and people sit and say, you know, well, God, I wish I knew then what I know now about consumption versus investment to generate alternative income to whatever salary you're making or whatever else is a great example. Or why did, why did I buy that big new house that was four times what a family of two or three or four needed? And it's all because people don't have plans. And then, you know, if you have the significant other, partner, whatever. Okay. Well, you share the plan with each other and then you, you hold yourselves accountable for frequently measuring, frequently reporting and appropriately rewarding the achievement of the plan, just like you would in business. Here's the thing that really triggered me here, right? I mean, I, I wrote a business plan to do this show. All right. I remember I, I looked it up at some, when I read this chapter, I looked up, I had my business plan to write, to do this show. And I've been so fortunate when my, before my wife and I got married, we did a lot of pre-counseling. Like, I think we were in pre-counseling for a year, right? Pre-marriage counseling before we got married. And, you know, I remember a pre-marriage counselor talking about, you know, how, how to fight fair, what that's going to look like, who's yeah. going to have who's going to have what roles, right? Everybody thinks, oh, we're going to share everything in the house 50-50. That's not true. You never share anything. So we literally had this list, like who's going to make the bed, who's going to do the laundry, who's going to wash the dishes, blah, 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 blah. We literally have this all written out. Who's going yeah, to do it? In writing is important. Right, right. People's yeah. memories get f- fuzzy, you know? It's <laughs> got to be in writing, yeah? Right. And the truth is what you start to realize is nothing is 50-50 in your relationship. No. no. 
it, it may average out that way, but some days are 95-5, some days are 70-30, some days are 60-40, right, one way or another. And this is why having this business plan, you know, you talk at, in another chapter about, you know, you got to prepare you know, a little bit for the worst, you know, you got to have a backup plan. But, you know, the truth, the truth of the matter is we, we think of a life plan, not just financially, but you need to think about what your self, you talk about this, think about what your self-care plan is, what's going to be your parenting plan, what's going to be your growth plan for your marriage. Yeah, you know we have a we have a marriage mission statement that good for you that we that we that is that is invisible display when everybody comes into our kitchen. So it's our it's our mission, it's our marriage mission, and <laughs> so we have that right. What is your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual plan? I talked about that at the beginning of the show. You talk about this. What you know? What is your what is your plan for work and life balance, etc. and so forth? I thought this was so imperative because you know well. You know, we'll sit down and we'll tell our employees, or you know, you will, or you will be told as an employee, you need to have a business plan for the year. Well, what's your life plan for the year? That was the question that that really that really punched me in the gut. You know, are we? Do we have? Do you have a life plan? And have you written it out? Yeah, exactly. It's 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 beautiful. Go ahead. And you know, the the other thing you mentioned is the other chapter on how to win win stuff. Yeah. The word yeah. stuff happens. And stuff happens. Yeah. That's why you need a plan. Right. Because especially in relationships, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, you're talking, well, why'd you get divorced? Oh, well, stuff happens. Right. But that, that, that is a term. If you look it up in the dictionary, the S word stuff happens. Schnibble. It's an exi- Schnibble yeah. Happens. Yeah. yeah. It's an ex- existential term, meaning right. the inevitable, unpredictable in life happens. Right. It does. Well, in that chapter of the book, I talk about, well, how do you win when shit happens? Right. You minimize the cases when you classify it as shit happening. In other words, you take responsibility for understanding and mitigating what is the predictable, in this case, causes of relationships ending. So if your relationship or your marriage ended because of arguments about kids, money, you know, career distractions, cheating, whatever else, well, guess what? You know, there are probably a million books out there that say this is why relationships are happening. So if your relationship ended because of one of those predictable things, that wasn't stuff happening. That was you failing to do your work and put in a plan to mitigate those risks. So right. yeah, and, and as you said, Jay, I, I can't reiterate this enough, in writing, because doing things in writing is the way that you understand clearly and immediately how much you know and how much you don't know about whatever topic you're writing on. Uh, his name is Skip Cummings. The book is entitled Mastering You from the Inside Out. Um, fabulous book, and we are working our way through it. We're, we're not even halfway through. Um, I doubt that we will get, uh, we, but we won't. It's just not possible. It's that good. It's that good. I want to move along to chapter six, um, boundaries set you free. And this is really, really something that we don't really talk about uh, in life or in business is our own boundaries. And uh, here's the definition that Skip comes right out with. Uh, at the beginning of that chapter, he says, personal boundaries are limits, rules, and principles that define what you consider to be acceptable and unacceptable behavior in your relationships, both your behavior and the behavior of others. Personal boundaries define how you will interact with others and allow others to interact with you. Let's talk boundaries here for a second, because we don't, I think we put, I think we put boundaries in other people, but we Boundaries aren't really so much for others. They're really for us, aren't they? Exactly. And if you were to ask me the two things that cost me my career, relationship, marriage, you know, net worth, et cetera, et cetera, it's lack of understanding of my origin programming. And secondly, is having no personal boundaries. Mm. And, you know, that comes from my origin programming. But personal boundaries are very, very important because if you go through life without personal boundaries, you're telling the outside world that you don't matter, mm. that you don't love yourself, mm. that you don't respect yourself. 
if you're constantly compromising your personal boundaries that you may have communicated to those you're in relationships with, you're not predictable. You know, it's like with your kids or with, you know, your pets, rules consistently applied. But when you start inconsistently or changing the rules constantly, you're unpredictable. And what you're communicating to yourself every time you do that and to others is your boundaries don't matter. You don't matter. That you are of secondary importance to the world around you. So you have to have healthy boundaries that you create, communicate, and enforce with others. But unless you're a narcissist, what that says is you have to respect similar boundaries in others. Mm. You say, and, and you know, you, you're, you're saying this and, and you say this in the book, you know, personal boundaries define who and what you, we are. It creates mutual beneficial relationships of all kinds, enabling you to become the master of you from the inside out and help you create and share the most abundance possible. Talk about that a little bit more because you, you, you've just alluded to it a little bit, but I'd like you to go a little bit deeper if you would about how our boundaries really do define us. Okay. Great example is my mother was a drug addict when, when I was living with my parents before they got divorced for the third and final time. So in essence, what she told me is my needs don't matter. I mean, I understand why she did that because she was preoccupied with her challenges, but she told me my needs didn't matter. Well, what that translated into is me being a classic codependent. I would give, 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 give just to get a little bit of love and approval back. So I had, and I always subordinated my needs to the needs of everyone else, meaning I had no boundaries, no boundaries whatsoever. In order to get some sort of love and approval, I would accept whatever people were doing to me because I wanted that love and approval. Well, by doing that, I was just communicating that I don't matter. And the person, the most important person that I was reconfirming that with every time I did that, guess who that was? Yeah, back at you, right? Me. Yeah. So consequently, all right, you fast forward, and now I'm the chairman and CEO of Cybernics. you know, being paid an astronomical amount in salary, and I have all this equity. Well, um, when we got FDA approval for depression, after uh, a big fight, I had the opportunity to sell just my vested stock and options for $50 million, five zero million, by dialing 10 numbers on my telephone and say, sell. In other words, it was right here. All I had to do was squeeze it and put 50 million in the bank. But I didn't do it. You know why? Because I thought my board of directors and my investors were my friends and I didn't want to let them down. Mm. What is the matter with me? And all the, all the while, the board of directors are selling their stock and my investors are trading in and out of their stock on a daily basis. But I had sold a little bit of stock before and the investors were like, well, wait a minute. You know, you're trying to sell the stock to us uh, or, or you're trying to get us to buy more stock at the same time you're selling. Well, yeah, I'm selling a very small portion when the window is open which you expect every management team to do. So again, if I had had healthy boundaries and said, look, you know, I'm going to do what's in the best interest of the mission. I am going to um, comply with all regulations and disclosure requirements. Uh, and, and that includes promoting the stock in the company, always being full disclosure and transparent, which are easy words to say, much harder to do in today's world, but I'm also gonna take care of me and my family. I'm also gonna be an effective CEO for the Cummins family. And I didn't do that, all because I didn't have healthy boundaries. You know, you make a point in this chapter, and it's really at the very beginning of it, you say to, to all of us, and it's so true. You say, healthy personal boundaries give you the power to say what, for many, is the most underused word in the vocabulary. No. <laughs> yeah. We, we are so, we, p 
people who even think that they're not people pleasers don't understand how little they often will say no and they will just give in. It's, it, it, it's classic disease to please. You, <laughs> you, so everybody out there listening, think about a person, maybe it's you, that has the disease, the disease to please and then ask yourself, do you think that that person has healthy boundaries? And the answer is no, they don't. And, you know, we're hearing all this stuff on TV right now about various politicians that say inappropriate things or touch uh, women inappropriately. You know what? That's all about boundaries. Right. And, you know, you're working for somebody that's crossing your boundaries. You know, you could tell them once. Um, but after that, it's like, you know what? You're fully aware that this was my boundary. You crossed it again. We're now going to go to the next step of consequences. Because I, I'm not going to put up with it. Every time you say yes when you really meant no, or every time you let somebody um, intrude on your boundaries, you are in essence communicating to yourself, remember this, first and foremost to yourself, that you don't matter. Right. You know, his name is Skip Cummings. Is he awesome? Folks, is he not awesome? We have people listening. By the way, I want to just thank everybody out on CastBox FM Live. Uh, probably the largest audience we have ever had. All of you out there on CastBox FM, uh, Mark, uh, uh, all of you, thank you so much for listening and everybody Facebook Live. And then, of course, all of you who are listening by podcast, radio. By the way, radio coast to coast. Um, thank you so much for listening. The book's called, um, you know what? Mastering You from the inside out. His name is Skip Cummings and he, you're listening to him here on A New Direction. Hey everyone, I wanna just quickly talk about my two sponsors that um, I love, love dearly, Epic Physical Therapy. Look, um, I talk about them, they've been a great help to me and my wife, but I wanna just tell you something about, first of all, they have these amazing facilities all over the Research Triangle Park and they offer the most advanced top of the line equipment. They, you know, like the Alter G, Gravity Treadmill, the Normatec Compression Sleeves, the Game Ready, which I talk about ad nauseum about the ice and the compression. It's amazing. Um, but you know what? They're also trained and certified in the most comprehensive cutting edge treatments like blood flow restriction therapy, dry needling, which is awesome. Um, cupping is another one that you may have seen swimmers with the little circles on their back. Look, um, if you want to learn more how you can just be better physically, at whatever you want to do, whether you're the professional athlete or whether you're just trying to get back into the game again, here's the deal. If you want your epic relief, epic recovery, and epic results, just start with Epic PT. It, it's really simple. It's epicpt.com. That's E-P-I-C-P-T.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, for over 35 years, she has been serving the world. And the reason why she serves the world is because she has made relationships with the best experts all over the world, literally. And the reason why she does that is because she does not belong to a national company. She is independently owned, operated, and completely local. Meaning that she has the freedom to actually find the best expert regardless of what company they work for. And she's created those relationships over the course of 35 years, which is why we tell people, if you're gonna look to either buy or sell a home, start with Linda Craft and Team Realtors because she's done it with relationships, right? And that's the key to everything is the relationships whether it's a relationship with yourself or a relationship with others. So you know what? When you're ready to do anything in real estate, start with the relationship leader. Start with Linda Craft and Team Realtors. You can learn more at lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And we're back here on A New Direction with Skip Cummins, his book, Mastering You from the Inside Out. Uh, you know what, Skip? I'm going to, I'm going to, I could spend ad nauseum talking about boundaries. Um, one of the things I do want to mention to people, though, in this chapter is you have the Personal Boundaries Bill of Rights. And it is another exercise in the book that really questions you in regard to your, you know, how you lax are your boundaries. And I have to be honest with you, Skip, this was really challenging because as much as I want to think that I've got pretty good boundaries, the truth of the matter is, in some situations, I do let them slide. And, you know, one of the things that you say, and you go, are, are you like me? I said it this way. Are you like Skip and find it much easier to live by workplace boundaries than personal boundaries? I should have said it. Are you like Jay 
and skip. <laughs> and so, um, but it's really true, right? Our boundaries in work sometimes can be easier than our personal boundaries. Oh yeah, of course, absolutely. And you know, on the subject of boundaries and plans and agreements, so one of the reasons that um, the mother of my children and I are now getting back together is we have a con, we have a relationship agreement that includes boundaries, especially as regards conflict resolution. So we have a plan to resolve disagreements, and those include boundaries of when we're going to do it, how we're going to do it, et cetera. So it's really important. But yeah, when you when you look in the workplace, Jay, I mean, there's an employee handbook. Everybody knows the rules of the road, and everybody knows the consequences if you violate those rules. So everybody's like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. So consequently, most people don't have a problem complying with those boundaries. And most people don't have a problem and aren't viewed negatively when they enforce those boundaries or company policies on others. But then you take that just like business plans to life plans, you take that back into your personal life. And all of a sudden it's, oh, well, you know, I don't want to be viewed negatively and, and create and communicate and enforce these boundaries because, you know, I'm going to lose all my friends and I'll be isolated. And one of the things I say in the book, which I really thought about when I started doing this, because heaven knows I needed as much work as anybody in, as regards boundaries, is I said to myself, well, you know what? Um, if, if I start creating, communicating and enforcing healthy boundaries with others, and then I respect their boundaries coming back, it's all plus ground. Mm. Because if they don't respect my boundaries, I'll end the relationship. And uh, if they do respect my bound, which is a positive, and they do respect my boundaries, I in turn respect theirs, and the relationship grows positively. So I view the, the um, creating, communicating, and enforcing of personal boundaries plus ground regardless. Regardless if your, the, your friend or whomever doesn't respect your boundaries and they go away, or the relationship strengthens. I, I just loved that chapter a lot. And I love this next chapter I'm about to bring up to you because I'm gonna jump way ahead. I'm gonna jump to chapter 16 called the self-care test. <laughs> yep. You used one of my favorite uh, analogies that I have used over and over again. And it's the, it's the airplane uh, flight attendant analogy. Yeah. When it comes to self-care, right? Everybody who has ever been on a plane, and if you have not been on a plane, okay. Um, but anybody who has been on a plane knows that the flight attendants come out and they talk about how to put your seatbelts together and and all these little things. But then they come to just comes this point where they they reach up and they unravel if the and they say, if the cabin pressure should lose air, right? A you know, it will unravel so that you can put your, your mask on first, put your mask on first and then put on everybody's mask next. Right. I mean, we just take it for granted. Okay. I'll put on my, I guess I'm supposed to put on my mask first. Why is that really a great analogy for life for you? <laughs> well, why do you put your oxygen mask on first on an airplane? Because you're not good to anybody else. If you've suffocated. <laughs> Yeah, right. right. So in life, if you're not taking care of yourself, you know, using your four trainings, training grades, and by yeah. the way, since meeting you, Jay, my training numbers have all improved. I'm not going to give you my numbers yet, uh, but uh, they, they've all improved even after writing the book. So but but the point is, if you're suffocating personally or professionally, financially, or uh, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, career-wise, if you're suffocating, how can you help anybody else? Right. So the way you help others, and a lot of people say, well, that sounds awfully selfish. No, it's not selfish. The way, the way you can provide the most help to your loved ones and the, the world around you is to be the best version of yourself, which right. means you got to put your oxygen mask on first so you're not suffocating. Because if you're suffocating in as regards any of those things I just mentioned, you're not much good to anybody else. Right. Which, funny, is one of the reasons I wrote the book. <laughs> is because 
quite honestly, I can't really help anyone else as much as I could otherwise, right. unless I put all that stuff in the book. Right. The success stuff is easy, but the tragedies and the opportunities of a lifetime killing mistakes and failures. Once I put that oxygen mask on me and come to terms with all that, then I can really help others. You, you have, you have an exercise here in chapter 16 and it's, you, it, you, you ask a, basically a series of questions. Here are a few questions to help you evaluate your self care. I just want to kind of just go through some of these, if you're okay with that, because I think, yeah, of course. People, I think people need to hear these. Here's the questions, folks. Listen, I want you to check in with yourself. Do you love yourself unconditionally and, and meaning at all times? Second one, do you forgive yourself for making mistakes? I, I'm going to stop there because I want to talk about why these two questions are so fundamentally important to us, loving ourselves unconditionally and forgiving ourselves for our past. Because mm -hmm. those two, without those two things, right, if you don't get those two things right, nothing else matters, does it? in terms of self-care? Nope, absolutely not. Do you, and again, okay, if I love myself unconditionally, that means I trust myself. That means I know that I can constructively criticize myself because I love myself. So yeah, you gotta love yourself unconditionally so much so that you trust yourself, you respect yourself, and you understand that, yeah, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have failures in life. So what? Right. You can coach yourself because you love yourself to keep growing. You know, I think, I think the thing that holds so many of us back, and it didn't hold you back even in your story, is that you, you, you admit that you made a n numerous numbers of mistakes along the way of this. I mean, you made, you made some bad decisions right? That you, you would say, you said in the book at sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes you just pick the wrong battles, right? We're not going to talk about that, but you talk about that in this, but sometimes what happens for us is we let our mistakes haunt us to the point that we can't stop the voices in our head, reminding mm -hmm. us of how badly we failed. Yep. And, and this is where, you know, and this is why they work so they, they work so hand in hand, loving yourself unconditionally and forgiving yourself for mistakes. Because if you love yourself unconditionally, unconditional love means, it's not that I don't hold you accountable for your mistakes, but I can forgive them. And so if you can't, if you can't get past your mistakes, you cannot be loving yourself unconditionally. That's right. Absolutely right. Right. That's the reason why I think that that's so powerful is because you, you, we can't. There's no way that you can tell me that you love yourself and you're keeping being haunted by your past and you won't forgive yourself for it, right? I, I, just, I just found that to be so powerful and it's a loop and, and it just made so, it so, made so much sense. And then you go on, of course, there's other things that you talk about here and Grandma Bowie, who I love Grandma Bowie, by the way. Yeah, Bowie, uh, like the Bowie knife. Oh, it's Bowie, oh, it's Bowie. So, yeah, like the Bowie knife. Jim Bowie. Yeah, Jim Bowie. So her, of course, that makes sense. So her, one of her great quotes, and she's got several in the book, you will never love someone else too till you love yourself. Absolutely. She said that to me so many times when I was a kid and she was absolutely right. Which one of the things that you give us as a recipe for helping us, and I'm a firm believer in this, is gratitude. Gratitude is a way of, of, of starting to practice unconditional love. Why is that connected? Oh, <laughs> because if you don't love yourself unconditionally and you're constantly hard on yourself, you're not grateful for yourself. Mm. You're not grateful for all the things that you've done to improve your life and the lives of others or the, or the wonderful blessings and gifts you've been given in your life. So absolutely, self-love and gratitude. Here's something else. And I would tell, I would suggest all your listeners, think about somebody who is just, doesn't seem to love themselves very much. Do they live a life of gratitude? Mm. The answer is probably not. 
because people who really love themselves understand all the blessings and the wonderful things that they've done and, and have been done for them. And as a result, gratitude flows. Beautiful. And you know, here's, here's something else about, here's something else about um, accepting your mistakes. And you mentioned holding yourself accountable. One of the terms that came to me when I was writing this book, like the origin challenge was compassionate accountability. I said that to a few people and they were looking at me like, no, no, that, that's, that's oxymoronic means you can't use those two phrases in the same term. But the answer is you can, Jay, because compassion, and I printed out the definition, compassion means sympathetic consciousness of others' distress, which is also empathy. You feel what other people feel, but together with a desire to alleviate that distress. So that's the action end of it. Oh, yeah, I, I feel for you, Jay. Yeah, I know exactly how you're feeling. But you know what? If, if you're feeling bad because you let yourself down, uh, you didn't achieve your plan or do what you said, so you're feeling bad. Yeah, I understand, Jay, how you're feeling bad. But if I really have compassion for you, I have to have a desire to help you alleviate that distress. How? By holding you accountable. Mm, beautiful which goes with goes to yourself most importantly. So yeah, you have your life plan, you have your relationship plan, you have whatever. You got to hold yourself compassionately accountable. Love that. Love that. Because it's the action part of that, the desire to alleviate your or that person's distress, which is key. Do you realize that we've been on an hour? <laughs> Yeah, and we could go on forever because you and I are, are <laughs> kindred spirits and brothers from another mother or whatever the term is. We sure are. You, you've been fantastic. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, as I close the show, please stay with me here. Everybody listen, the book is titled Mastering You from the Inside Out. You've heard Skip Cummins. Get the book. By the way, I'm doing a book giveaway because I have an extra one of these books. If you would like to get a free copy of Skip's book, Here's all you got to do. I need you to go to my Facebook page, right? It's the it's where I do the show from. It's it's facebook.com internet doctor and be the first one to say, I want Skip's book. That's all you got to do. I want Skip's book. And if you say, I want Skip's book, the first person who comes across my timeline, I will send you a free copy of Skip's book, Mastering You from the Inside Out. It's available um, in bookstores sold everywhere. Folks, this is the show. I say it to you every week, be inspired, because when you're inspired, that means you can inspire others. And when they become inspired, that means they will in turn will inspire other people around them, and that will make this world a great place. I will be back next week with another great guest, another great book, and it's going to be another great show, I promise. As I say to you every week, you know what that is, right? Ciao. Every. Buddy.